Alrighty, so now that we've given you a slight introduction to the options, if you're here, I'm guessing you've selected that you're going to do the cloud dev environment. Okay, so what I'll do in this video um, is I'll walk you through how to do the setup for Gitpod IO. I do want to say though, you do need to have uh, your private and your public repos set up. So just to show you what this would look like, and I would recommend you're logged in to GitHub with your username. So there's an interesting thing on GitHub, and if you've taken some of my other classes, you may have seen this. You have your own private part or your own um, username repos, but in this case, we've created repos inside of our Git our GitHub organization. So they'll show up right here, but you can also come over here and just go to 93. And then you're logged into the organization as a student or as a member of this organization. Okay. And if I hit view organization at this point, for this particular user, I should see two repos. So the reason I'm showing you this is to say, make sure you have these two set up that you have a public and a private one using lower cases, dashes, the way I've shown, just makes life easier for everybody. Okay, so now let's actually go to Gitpod.io and start the setup process and then just talk a minute about what is Gitpod.io. You can just go Gitpod.io. No, the thing it'll ask you here is actually if you want to try it out, Right, but we're actually going to just log in and I'll show you this in a minute. But it's a really good thing to kind of take a look around, you know, the docs and the blogs. And, you know, you can, there's just a lot you can do here. Um, and you can look at some of the companies that use this, which is quite a few. I was uh, really delighted to see. What we're going to do is just barely kind of touch on using it, but it's going to give us everything we need. Um, you can look at the docs, which I always find reading docs is really helpful. But how does Gitpod work is it basically is going to create a workspace that's going to be uh, a place where you can work in, uh, in this case, VS Code. I'll show you that in a second. But it's done through what's called containers. And containers are basically a virtualized environment for you to be able to work in the cloud. Okay, so you know, it's the idea of organizing instead of locally, like you, like some of you may have chosen, you're going to do this in a workspace out on the cloud. Okay, so we're going to log in. So what you're going to do here, and this is what I recommend, is you actually log in with your GitHub. For one thing, you don't have to create another account, which is always a good thing, okay? Um, I mean, I haven't ch uh, used any of the others. I would just recommend doing it here. It, and the reason is, and you'll see this in a moment, it's going to connect the work we've done with setting up the repos already to this workspace that you're about to create to do the coding for this class. So I'm going to say continue with GitHub. And in this case, what I need to do, I need to authorize Git. Uh, pod into the GitHub, okay, and in this case into the organization uh, wants to access so your account. That's fine. Yep, and then we're going to go ahead and authorize it to do so. Cool. Now, in this case, we're going to use VS Code. What's kind of cool here is there are other IDEs, but we're actually going to use VS Code in the browser. Right, and we'll just go ahead and continue. Um, now, this would be for other options. I don't recommend doing it at this point. This is just going to make all of our lives, especially in the beginning of this, much easier. So use VS Code Browser and hit Continue. And now you're ready to actually define your workspaces. OK, so there's a couple of ways you can do this. But let me just conceptually again say what we're going to do is we're going to take these two repos and we're going to end up making them their own workspaces so that you can work on them. OK, so come back over here and there's two ways to do this. It gives you a little hint here about one quick way to do it. And I'm going to show you both ways. OK, I think I can do this both ways. I'm going to create a new workspace. And what it will do is automatically go look <laughs> at, it should actually just go, and it'll kind of look at some other uh, things on uh, GitHub. But in this case, it actually defaults to the public one, okay? So I'm actually going to do uh, the private one. So let's actually do that. So I'm going to click into the private. I'm going to see if 
you know, and you know, when you're doing stuff like this, sometimes things go wrong, you figure it out. I'm going to actually copy the URL here. And what I did is I clicked into the private, which I know is the PRI one. I copied the URL over in Gitpod, and I'm just going to paste it and I'm going to hit enter. Oh, and of course, oh yeah, I need to grant access to it. This is actually probably why I wanted to do the private one first. So I need to grant access in, into the organization. Now, in this case, I've already done this step uh, from for the organization, but you just have to do it for your particular login to the organization. Nothing wrong here. It should be totally fine. Just authorize Gitpod.io, and then boom, it should be there. And now this is the part where it's actually setting up a little mini I would say a slice of a machine for you to have. So this is VS Code, right? VS Code is actually one of the most popular editors available uh, on the web today, okay? Uh, not on the web, just on local. Many, many people are using VS Code. Now, I just want to show you this. First, this is the in environment. This is your private repo. Okay, again, I showed you. And now we're actually gonna do the same thing for your public repo, okay? But what we can do is we've actually, this is actually a workspace that's already started. It's actually got a couple of things already in here. I definitely would, um, you know, check out some of the stuff. I'm gonna show you in a minute some of my setup that I do for VS Code just to have it that way. You can do uh, as much of this or as little as you want because we're gonna learn it as we go. But I also think it's a great thing to have done. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up another tab and I'm going to go back to gitpod.io. Now, the reason I'm going to do that is now because I'm already logged in, I can see that first workspace that I've created, okay, which is awesome. And this can be a little confusing when you first start. So just, you know, follow along here is that when it's green like this, it's running. It actually will tell you this is uh, this workspace is currently running for you. Uh, and if I click over, I see that this is actually the worst workspace itself. This is just a, a link to go to the workspace in case I had closed it. Because you could absolutely close this. Like I could come over here and I could close this. And you might wonder, well, why is it still green? It takes it a little while for it to go through its timeout. Okay, so you can close tabs, right? And I'm going to show you uh, in the next video how to do the workflow of actually coding and saving and pushing work. But in this case, if so for some reason you close it, you can always just come back to Gitpod.io, which will bring you, if you're logged in, back into here. And I want you to know this link will take you back to the workspace. This link will actually take you to the GitHub uh, spot, which in this case, I want to open this one. Okay. And notice the second time around, it's much faster because what it's done now is it's actually already running and all it had to do is just bring it into the browser. So it's much faster that way as well. But what I want to do is I want to hit back because I want to come back here because I want to do another one. Okay. This one I'm going to do and it's going to create the, the public one, but I just want to show you a different way because it's kind of fun to do it the other way. We're going to create a new workspace. Oh, it's actually already listed there as that one. I actually wanted to show you the way you can just copy a URL. Let me see if I have that here. I don't. Hang on a second. Let me find what I'm looking for. Okay, it took me a second to find it. And that's where reading documentation is really great, <laughs> but it's context. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and you can just you know, watch, or you can do it the other way I did the other one. Doesn't really matter. But because I've already done, if I want to remind myself, I did the private one, I'm going to do the public one now. Okay. Again, you can do this however, if you want to do it the same way on both of them, it's fine. I just kind of wanted to show the difference. I'm going to come up to the URL after I've gotten into the public one. And at the end, the beginning of before the HTTPS, I'm going to paste in that gitpod.io forward slash pound. And I think that's all I have to do. Let's find out. If I hit enter here, oh, that's cool. What it's doing here is it's creating that context. And in this case, it's creating that workspace. So now what I'm going to have is I'm going to have two workspaces, which is awesome, right? Um, so I now have successfully created my two workspaces that I need to get work done for this class.
right? Just to remind us, right? Actually, no, let's, hopefully by that time you've gotten that, which by the way, the only reason I'm getting this message is because I have VS Code loaded locally and I don't want to connect them as of right now. And when I open the second one, I actually, I love this in the public and I'm not sure why this only shows up there and maybe there's just something else, but you can do a really um, just quick go through and learn VS Code. If you've taken my CAT82, we use VS Code there and you get some experience. But if you're new into my classes, having it here is a really good thing. Okay, so you can get started with VS Code. You can learn some of the fundamentals. You can also do that other thing we saw before, which get started with Git IO or Git Pod IO. But I want to show you some of the setup I have just because I think it's fun to do. Notice down here in the bottom, and again, this is on my public. You can do it on both. Let's see if it actually kind of transfers over. I'm going to go into color things because one of the things I don't like <laughs> is the default Git Pod light. So what I do is I can either, and look at all these different ones, right? Like, but my favorite is actually um, VS Code Dark. And that's kind of nice. I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to increase my font size so it's a little easier. So that's a cool way to do it, is that you have this in here. And now I've saved it. Let's see if it actually ends up saving my other. I'm going to go back to Git Pod and look at my uh, workspaces and see if in my other one, dashboard, Okay, so I have my public, so let's open my private one. Let's see if it automatically, oh, it doesn't. So looks like I need to do that same step for both. I'm gonna get rid of that again. I'm gonna come down here. Oh, actually it's not there. It's actually right here at the gear. I'm gonna do manage, color themes. I'm gonna do, oh, it actually already picked it up. Look at that, as I was doing it, it already picked it up. <laughs> I didn't even have to. And that's one of the cool things that things kind of just I've noticed show up on my different workspaces as far as settings go. Okay, so I think this is a probably a good place to kind of stop at this point, because what we've done, because the next part is actually me showing you how to actually code in the VS Code, uh, and then how to uh, push these uh, changes into GitHub, which is where you'll submit them. So hopefully these, start, these terms are starting to uh, make a little more sense and it's starting to jive. But let me just give you this, is that over here, we're looking at the Explorer, okay? Explorer is your files. You can do search, source control, which we're gonna learn at the command line, which by the way, here's the terminal, the command line. It defaults into Git pod task one. And this is where, and you'll hear me talk about this on the last item for this, is like understanding how to run straight JavaScript without the browser is good. And having a terminal access is really good because that's where we'll run Git commands. But at this point, I just want you to know you now, if you go back to your workspaces, you will see these two show up. And what will happen is if you just leave this open after about 30 minutes, these things will time out. And that browser, you may get an error and you can just close that browser, come back here, click on it again, and it'll activate it. It'll reactivate that workspace. And then I have not had this need, but I just want you to know if you ever needed to, you could also delete it and just recreate it. Uh, that may be there, you know, again, this is something I've used for a couple of months now. I like everything about it, but I don't know everything about it. And that's where as students start to use it, I will actually learn more and more as we will collectively. But now that these two are here, I just want you to know what it looks like. And now you have everything to actually start working in this class uh, and get stuff done. I hope this was helpful. I hope this made sense. Uh, and then we'll talk next about the workflow.